Hey, 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 everyone. We are live again with another State of Chess.com show. It's everyone's favorite quarterly quarterly show where we dive in and review all that was Chess.com over the last several months, give you some updates that maybe you weren't aware of in regards to products and features, talk a little bit about the, the general state of things and where we're going. Usually have some very special guests, and today is no exception. And then we round up with some Q&A, kind of AMA style, if you will, where I, uh, I'd like to think that we've gotten into some pretty fun and, and rather sensitive topics here on this show, and, and we, uh, we answer all your questions to the best of our ability and just make sure that you feel in touch with everything that is chess.com. So that's my 32nd, what exactly is this show for those of you who may have missed it, but the state of chess.com, call it an open forum sort of podcast style review of all that's going on in the world of online chess. Uh, from the from the eyes, from the goggles, if you will, of chess.com's leadership crew. And uh, and yeah, that's that's what this show's all about. So before we even dive into our, our product features, just give a huge shout out to chat. Um, I believe I see someone in Chess TV who just said morning from Australia. Is that an actual thing? Because it's noon over here on the Pacific West Coast. So if it's if it's morning in Australia, um, that's that's just an odd time zone. That's like it's, I think it's like super early, right? So shout out to you, Math So One, uh, and uh, welcome in, welcome in this morning. Quick shout out over to YouTube. What's up, Joey Bishop, and uh, everybody who's who's chilling on YouTube and Twitch. We see that uh, the chat is rocking and rolling already. It's six a.m. apparently over there in in Australia, according to according to Twitch. Um, Shout out to uh, Jan Ludwig Hammer. Funny to see you in the chat, given given uh, what may or may not be happening later on in this show. But uh, but yeah, so on that note, we're going to dive right in here and, and start reviewing how we start every State of Chess.com show is with a quick product review. Remind you of some of the things we did, some updates, maybe some cool features and tools you're not a, you're not even aware of. Um, and uh, just do a do a high level breakdown of, of what we've been working on here. All of our developers, our designers, our, our product, our support team, everyone who's working super hard to make chess.com awesome. This is the stuff they've been doing over the last quarter. So let's go ahead and dive in here and we'll uh, we'll we'll check out what July has to offer and uh, and go from there. So here we go. We've uh, July in review was interesting because I, I was I was looking at it. And um, honestly, the thing that caught my eye, you know, some some little improvements for sure. But the big thing that caught my eye was that we uh, were getting we were getting closer and closer to what we'll talk a little bit more about in August, which is that um, the feature that has become super popular, the key moments tool, where we not only have the tools we had previously in, in terms of game report, meaning you play a game and it gives you a breakdown of your of your mistakes, of your best moves, all that sort of stuff. But the key moments tool is, is sort of designed to go even further into helping you. It literally holds your hand to the biggest the biggest moments of the game. When you left book, um, when the blunt when the biggest blunders happen for you or your opponent. And you know, as we continue to work on this tool, our our goal is to make sure that everyone feels empowered to get better on their own time, right? Not everyone has a chess coach going over their games. Not everyone has someone uh, giving them that advice. So the key moments tool, continue to look for this. This is where a lot of what I like to say are our brightest minds at chess.com are working all the time. Um, analysis, we'll call it unlocking kind of the whys of chess, right? When you play a game and you ask the question, why did I lose, right? And if I was to give you my view on what I think the phil philo philosophy of our company is in terms of helping people get better at chess, that's really where a lot of our focus goes all the time, which is helping helping create tools that allow you to understand why uh, you're doing things wrong and, and where you can get better. So I'd say that that's the, uh, that's the number one thing that, that we brought up in July. But my favorite thing, even if that's the number one thing, is definitely the theater mode. I don't know if you guys have seen this yet. Um, you know, we have a little gif here. We'll watch it a few times because what else have we got to do, right? We're watching, we're watching chess here at noon on a Friday on the Pacific West Coast. But for streamers who aren't using this, um, it's actually a super cool tool. It would, it would change some of the templates and stuff, but brings a little more visual life. It's kind of like, it's kind of like mini focus mode, right? For those of you who know focus mode from our older live chess server, server this is only available at chess.com slash play. So the new and what will be the future version of where people play the most chess games in the world every day. And uh, the theater mode is not quite full focus and that it eliminates everything on the screen besides the chessboard and the clocks, but a little bit of a better visual experience makes people feel like they're, you know, maybe a little more over the board and, um, 
and yeah, I really do like it. It's it's serious, seriously is a lot of fun. And whenever I'm playing at play, if I'm not streaming, I'm in theater mode. And if I am streaming, I guess I need to work on my own templates and put my put my money where my mouth is. Um, give a give a shout out to uh, the chat and remind everybody that Chesscom Tom over there is our community manager. Speaking for speaking for me and uh, the others who will be on this show soon. Definitely ask your questions, not just in the Chess TV chat. Um, but uh, in our Discord as well, where Tom is pretty active and we are gathering questions all the time. So a big part of this show is you guys getting your questions answered and your voice being heard. Um, and so uh, definitely please do engage with that. Obviously, we're also looking over at Twitch and YouTube, but I would say that uh, Chess TV is where a lot of the focus is. So if you have a question you really want to get staff attention to, go ahead and head over to Chess TV and use it. So, all right, moving on from July, we're going to bounce over to August here. August is where we we did we did jump in even further into the key moments um, and literally added a button where you see a key moment and then you click next key moment and you continue to uh, roll forward with us sort of hand holding you to where you uh, where you could have improved in your game or where you already did an awesome job right um, the uh, the bots we're going to get to in a little bit and in a real quick preview in our uh, feature product section which you see near the bottom is going to be first time ever me me streaming interaction with our new our new uh, bot experience, which is adorably awesome and super addictive for those of you who sometimes want to play, uh, but maybe not a human, but still not necessarily an engine. You want some personality. We'll get into that later on. But the bots was obviously something that we continued to sort of preview in August. Um, I would say one of the biggest things that we've done recently is, is kind of a visual sort of facelift to our, to our lessons. It wasn't fully out yet um, in August, and, and it is now in, se in September and October. But um, our lessons interface, a lot of feedback we got from people was that it wasn't, it wasn't interactive enough. You didn't feel like you really understood uh, what you were getting if you wanted to take a certain lesson. So we've just added a, a much more kind of engaging preview of the lessons that you might um, want, want to take and a little bit better description. And if you haven't actually even done the, a new lesson um, since we've improved some of the other actual tools that make it work in terms of, you know, when you guess a wrong answer and that sort of stuff, I would really encourage you to, to give the new lessons interface a try. That's just under learn and, and, uh, and lessons there. So if you, if you haven't tried it yet, I would definitely suggest that you should, I guess I skipped over our fair play section. That's usually the thing people really love tuning in for, right? Fair play and have me talk about it. What happened in July? Let's just see. I like knowing. Wow. We closed a lot of accounts in July. No surprise, right? <laughs> and uh, we also have, uh, let's see, we took action on 14 title players. That's unfortunate. Pretending like I don't know. Pretending like he doesn't know what's going on, Dan. That's my nickname from time to time, right? Being involved in a lot of sensitive fair play and cheating scandals. Sometimes it gets exhausting. That's the truth. Um, what did we do in August? Yeah. Um, actually, looks eerily, eerily similar, right? Not quite, but also 14 title players. So that's interesting. Um, and uh, and again, we we have also, you know, one of the things that the Fair Play team probably doesn't get enough credit for is, is the amount of games we review that we don't even take action on, right? Um, and, and that's a big part of it, of course. And I always say that, well, when we try to open up and we have in the past, and if you guys don't know those videos, uh, you probably haven't been watching the show over the last year, but we've really jumped into talking pretty much as much as we can without quite literally revealing some of the, the some of the proprietary stuff. Um, and I would say that those who are very astute and statistically inclined observers, if you listened to my last couple of videos on what it is our algorithm does, you might already be having being given more clues than you realize in terms of what really makes us um, um, do things maybe a little differently than what others do as far as catching, let's say 2,700 grandmasters in very short amount of games, right? That's not an easy thing to do or pull the trigger on when um when by definition they're supposed to play like engines because that's what they're trying to do right so um a lot of the stuff that we're doing is um is designed to take action in big moments but what doesn't get enough credit like i was saying is all the work that goes into ensuring that people are clean right it's easy to to scream on social media that someone's guilty but falsely accusing people is also very dangerous and not something that we we do and want to do and so um and i every time i see that number i'm a little bit shocked in terms of the amount of effort that's going into that stuff. Um, <laughs> shout out to Matso one who loves the Discord plug. I'm pretty sure we have a question from you from Discord, Matso. So a little preview for you to stick around when we get to our, our Ask the Chief section there on the right side. I'm pretty sure we, we took one of your questions. Um, so, uh, so yeah, stick around for that. 
Um, and if anybody's not on Discord yet, you should definitely do it. Um, and uh, and yeah, just checking in with other chats here. While we have a second, just reading your reading your chats. It is wonderful. It is wonderful. Thank you. Um, and thanks to Smarty Pants Chess. Shout out to the Fair Play team. We appreciate that. Indeed. Over there on uh, on Twitch, what's going on in the time of Nick? Um, that's a really good question. Will someone make a note of that for when Eric joins from in the time of Nick? Nick, because we'll talk a little bit as much as we can about our current relationship with FIDE, right? The international governing body of over the board chess. Obviously we have a relationship with the United States Chess Federation in regards to fair play. But Nick asks on Twitch, if someone gets caught for over the board cheating, have we considered taking action against them on chess.com? There's a lot of lines there, right? As far as where, where we dance and why, what's up Chess Bay? Um, and we'll answer that as best we can and tell you some of the efforts we're, we're putting in to, um, to making sure that the communities feel protected across all chess sites, but also over the board chess, but also, you know, just give you, you know, the insight into, um, it's not exactly our jurisdiction, right, to take action, and it's not what our users agree to legally when they sign up, right, their terms of service. So the short answer to your question, Nick, is of course we don't take action. Do we, do we make ourselves aware and then review and perhaps become enlightened as far as what that person might be doing? That's, a, that's an obvious question, right? To which I would never on the record say, yes, we do that, right? Um, but uh, you get it. So um, anyway, we've got, we've got a, lot, a lot going on um, and obviously a big cheating scandal that hit papers this week. Um, not even our own cheating scandal. So that's refreshing, right? Um, and it's, it's a tough thing, you know, when, when we're talking about it. And we always get into it on this show because as soon as I open the door and um, open the veil. That sounded weird. Open the veil and people get to see the real Danny. There's no way I can't stream my consciousness and give you the real thoughts of how difficult it is, right? There's a lot going on with that, a lot of scandals um, when regards to cheating and it's our own pandemic online, if, if I may be so bold to use a word comparing it to something that I probably shouldn't, but it's been very tough. But um, we'll talk a little bit more about that and answer your question, Nick, when Eric joins the show later on. That's what I'll say. Um, okay, so back to our... Uh, Back to our month that we haven't gotten to yet. Let's do that. We'll dive over to September. And thanks for all the chats for, you know, keep bringing questions. Tom, Tom is around, our community manager. Chris is here, our staff and mods working super hard. Thank you, as always. Um, and they'll gather those questions. We'll make sure that we, um, we keep as many as we can for, um, for later on. So um, September. September was a big month. September's the month I wanted to get to. And I know it's like, well, you skip by July and August a little bit. Well, frankly, those... those uh, those reports were a little bit, um, um, a little bit, some of them you could tell the meat of those reports was almost previewing things that wasn't quite out yet, right? But again, as we said in August, the the, the web improvement to lessons was coming and it really has, um, you know, gotten to a point where I think if you dive into the lessons experience, like challenge, take take my challenge today, go go find a lesson on like a random opening. Uh, Tuan Min Lee actually had a really good series on his uh, his little Knight C6 Sicilian he plays. That's wonderful time for those of you who don't follow, probably the strongest international master in the world as far as online chess goes. That guy's a monster, just playing our SEC Invitational. It was actually an instructive series if you're looking for a new weapon. But, you know, we want feedback there. You can actually leave comments now in lessons. Um, it's just making it more engaging for our community. Um, and um, I would, I would get, give you a challenge to check that out if you haven't already. Um, so then what really, what really kind of hit, hit the press this month was our, our bot play. And at the end of this show today, I'm going to take the challenge for the first time and try to beat my own Danny bot. Um, twist ending, I'm probably not going to be able to do it, <laughs> but I'm going to try my best. No, I will not try to take the challenge of the Hikaru bot. But look for news very, very soon on an announcement of, um, of an event for our streaming community. Um, It'll be something a little Twitch rival style where we'll have a really fun kind of speed run system. Obviously beating all the bots might be, might be the highest prize, but also some fun challenges like beat all the bots wearing a hat, these sort of things. So um, for those who are uh, looking for a really fun event and our streamers don't even know this is coming, a little bit of a teaser, look for an article to come out probably early next week um, with our first ever bot speed run challenge. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, we'll have uh, several thousand dollars in prizes and just more events for our streamers who are entertaining you, the masses, our community. Um, we had a, a mobile upgrade to our, actually this was web and mobile. That's right, this was a discussion. I remember being in the room here where we kind of uh, just sort of gave a little bit more 
clarity to our users. Believe it or not, there's a lot of time and thought that goes into this stuff. Because when you have data that says just by changing the order of something, you can increase direction to it by like thousands of, of new users and clicks, you have to put a lot of thought into what exactly um, you're doing there. So we've just been doing some upgrades, learning more about what our users are telling us they want to do. Um, and speaking of our users telling us things they want to do, I'm scrolling past some things that were kind of kind of simple. But the big one that also came out in September was our um, our variance page, right? Right now, if you go to chess.com slash variance, uh, you can see that we've had a lot of new stuff come along, right? And a lot of them have been have been surprisingly popular. Um, Fog of War, so much so that if we're talking about other events we're going to be doing, I already previewed a bot speed run. Look for us to announce some sort of Fog of War event. We're calling it Fog Champs internally right now after our Pog Champs event, of course. But uh, Fog Champs will be a lot of fun and probably similar in terms of uh, an opportunity for anyone who wants to stream and compete and play uh, play in, in some sort of knockout style event with Fog Champs. We've seen Hikaru and Levy Rosman, two of the most popular streamers, playing a lot of it. And Fog Champs, if you haven't tried it, not Fog Champs, excuse me, Fog of War, if you haven't tried it. It's pretty fun. Pretty fun. Um, and uh, of, we also launched several of the variants that were um, specifically related to the Alpha Zero papers on uh, on kind of uh, game assessing game balance in chess the capture anything was uh, one of the variants that had a lot of a lot of interest given the Chrome mixed thoughts on it that he thought maybe maybe the most the biggest win of the papers it might just be an improved version of chess were Vladimir's thoughts so interesting stuff if you haven't tried out chess.com's variants remember that's partly what this show is kind of just reminding you of all the things we're doing and uh and giving you a giving you a reminder or a, maybe a, an a encouraging nod to go check it out. Um, all right, getting down to our favorite part of uh, of everyone's report. Obviously, in September we had our our uh, biggest, most public ever closure after the Pro Chess League Finals. Um, that was one of those nine players, but of course we uh, we made others. And again, just a lot of games, a lot of work being done. Shout out to the team working super hard there doing everything we can to do what's right for the game. And it's not easy and it's not fun. I can tell you it will be the one of the main things I don't miss, let's say in 10 years when I'm rolling over in a grave somewhere, having completely lost all of my hair and, um, and all that stuff. So um, we've got, uh, we've got everyone tuning in here. Shout out to the Twitch chat again um, for good questions. And uh, Tom, I know is there gathering them KB KB Con 91 says fog of war is the best. I tend to agree. Uh, Rafi doesn't like automate. Interesting. You know, when we get the uh, the man himself, the CEO on the show later, I'll ask Eric um, if uh, what he what he thinks of automate. Eric Eric is a bit of a chess compu computer chess nerd. We'll, we'll let we'll let him just like own it. You know, in terms of uh, in terms of everything that goes into uh, how, how engines assess the game and all the fun ways to kind of play with what's under the hood. Um, if you don't follow what's at the CCC, um, just chess.com slash CCC, we're back to streaming 24 seven games. In fact, I can see that, wow, there's actually 254 people watching the CCC right now. If you go to twitch.tv slash computer chess, um, I should just throw that in the link actually. It's actually funny. Slash, it's you know its own community, and I would say that Eric is actually probably one of the biggest fans of computers and uh, computer chess, the neural network, you know, machine learning direction that the game is taking. And so, um, the computer chess stream is back and live all the time, um, and often a, a, a fun chat and just some interesting insights being uh, going down over there. Sometimes we find some of the most interesting games played every week were not by humans, right? They were by Leela versus Stockfish, right? And and we try to cover those those games for our YouTube channel. And all those sort of things. So, um, yeah, I'm surprised to see more than 250 people over there watching it right now. So, um, all right. Well, um, we've we've rolled through some of our our product updates, maybe a little bit faster than I initially intended, which is why we're uh, why we're um, en I'm engaging with chat a little bit more. I can tell you, Hosh Berkey, um, there is no plans for a PP in your Pampers Invitational. Um, because when you issue a lifetime ban against someone, you don't also then go back and, and make a, a fun event out of it, right? <laughs> not to say that anyone else can't do it, but it's not something as much as that sounds like a, an exciting idea. That's kind of a non-starter for me, right? Um, that's not why we do the event. So um, shout out to uh, Chiratin Biswas over on YouTube clarifying that uh, 
the Jan Ludwig Hammer is going to be on the show very soon. And, uh, and yeah, thanks to everybody who's here and tuning in no matter where you are. So, okay. Um, why don't we actually a little bit early, we'll take our first quick break and, and get set for um, our, our first guest to be joining. Coming up here will indeed be some hammer time. We have not had Jan Ludwig Hammer on a chess.com show in quite some time, um, but uh, Hammer has intentions to bring back his, his streaming channel uh, regularly with chess.com. He's also going to be joining me for some commentary um, during the, uh, the Speed Chess Championship event itself. Um, and we invited him to be a special guest on today's show to give us his thoughts on what it means for Magnus to be rejoining the fold. And maybe, maybe he has some questions for me. I don't know. But Hammer and I are going to dive into a special Speed Chess Championship preview as the biggest event, our biggest event of the year, right? There's a, and that's, I say that uh, very humbly. I mean, honestly, because online chess has just blown up, right? The Magnus Carlsen tour that Chess24 has been doing has been incredible. There's obviously been all, all other kinds of huge events. I mean, we've done events this year online that we weren't originally planning to do. The FIDE Online Chess Olympiad, the Online Nations Cup. Um, we know that uh, there's, I mean, I guess the U.S. Championships just finished for St. Louis. So seriously, there's so many great events online, but the Speed Chess Championship has kind of been our baby and the flagship here at chess.com for about four years. So for us, it's kind of our Super Bowl. We're super pumped for the SEC to be coming back here in, over the next month and a half. And uh, I can't wait to have Hammer on the show here in just a few minutes to talk about uh, his thoughts. And he and I are going to do some previews, at least of the earliest matches um, coming up, which have some of the biggest names already. And so don't go anywhere. More stateofchess.com, more, more uh, speed chess championship previewing and some Hammer time in just a few moments.
And we are now joined by a very, very special guest, Grandmaster Jan Ludwig Hammer, who, uh, can I call you the face of chess for NRK TV there in Norway, or is that going to get me in trouble with someone? I, I think that's definitely going to get you in trouble because I have never worked for NRK in Oh, my that's life. right. It's TV2. Right? I, I am with TV2, and they are the main, <laughs> uh, main source of chess uh, content for a Norwegian TV audience. Wow, uh, I really be- messed that up, didn't I? You really did, yeah. <laughs> um, but they are the ones who were broadcasting, for instance, this summer during the corona time. All the sport got cancelled, you know? Yep. And they were thinking, how are we going to fill our channels with, with, with sports people are interested in when all soccer has been cancelled? And they made this deal to, to broadcast internet chess and so I've had a I had a very busy summer, but it's been and, and most of the focus there has been on the Magnus Carlsen tour, right? Obviously, we know that Norwegians like themselves some some Magnus Carlsen on TV. But were you guys covering any other events, or was it mainly the the tour? No, it was exclusively the tour. Okay. But I will say that something that happened this summer that has never happened before is that we broadcasted chess even on days where Magnus was not playing, uh, like for the, the final between Nakamura and, and Dubov right. um, in, in one of these uh, events, uh, that was a three-day final. Uh, and it, <laughs> people were still watching it That's in incredible. Norway, even though uh, Magnus was not playing. Well, if you forgive my my slip uh, and uh, all apologies to TV too, of course we know um, I was uh, aware that just all all chess is amazing there in Norway and there are multiple multiple stations. But Magnus Carlsen covered on TV too by Jan Ludwig Hammer, and now Magnus Carlsen uh, getting covered by Hammer again on Chess.com. So how surprised were you when Magnus uh, committed to playing the Speed Chess Championship this year? I was extremely surprised. Uh, actually, I was going to ask you about that. I want to know, how did you get Magnus Carlsen to play in the Speed Chess Championship? You're putting me on the spot. So this is this is funny uh, because it, the, the answer is probably going to shock you. I wrote him an email and said, hey, Magnus, you want to play this year? And uh, Henrik, on, on Magnus's behalf, replied and accepted. And, and I know we say this a lot, and it, it sounds like you know, I don't know, showboating or grandstanding, but it's just, it is the truth. It is our policy. We don't offer appearance fees. We never have for any event, not even to anybody. And it's, we always just try to do prizes and it's fun. It's online. And I didn't expect Magnus to accept, right? Obviously everyone, it's a well chronicled uh, situation. You know, he's been doing his thing for chess 24 and, and, and making, making his own chess company great, which has led to the fact that he hasn't been on our, playing on, on, on our site over the last couple of years. Um, you know, he, he was extended during the Online Nations Cup, but that was because it was at a FIDE event. It wasn't necessarily our event, and obviously that didn't work out. But the answer, Hammer, is just surprisingly simple. I wrote him an email, as I always have, and invited him to our events, just like I will again for next year or the Pro Chess League, I guess. Um, who knows? But that was all it was, man. I was surprised, and, and obviously we're thrilled to have him back. Yeah, I think it's it's a huge scoop, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, joining you uh, for commentary uh, very soon, actually, uh, Magnus is, is playing against the Iranian uh, Wonderkind. Well, I, I can't really say Iranian Wonderkind because there's two of them. There's so <laughs> many of say, these yeah. Iranian youngsters, but he's right. playing one of them, yep. uh, who I prefer to refer to as Parham. Yep. His, uh, pronunciation, uh, pronouncing his, his last name is, is a bit of a struggle. I used to call, I was thinking about calling him Dr. P for a while. I like to give nicknames, but I already gave that name to Pantala Hare Krishna. So yeah, Parham Magsudlu was one of the guys who worked super hard throughout our entire Grand Prix series, uh, which was different this year, right? I mean, I know you've kind of followed it, right? But one of the differences this year, Hammer, was in previous years, we invited at least 12, if not if not more of the participants. This year, we invited only half the field. So there were a lot more slots open for qualification and Parham took one. And now he gets awarded by playing Magnus, right? I mean, what do you, you know, that's- uh, Awarded? Awarded by playing Magnus, exactly, right? But um, well, let, let's talk a little bit about it, right? So obviously you just previewed for us the match coming up on November 2nd, but I think a lot of people are asking the obvious question, is the rematch inevitable? And I think there's a lot of storylines that can go into this. So I'll just ask you, off the top of your head already, 
is the rematch sort of a foregone conclusion between the one and two seed by Fide Blitz ratings, Hikaru Nakamura and Magnus Carlsen? Or do you think you think we might be surprised this year by anything? I don't think we will see any surprises. I believe the rematch is inevitable. And frankly, that's what's got me so excited about this year's Speed Chess Championship. Because the, the duel between Hikaru and, and Magnus, it's just the best internet chess has to right. offer. And we saw it during the, the Magnus Carlsen chess tour this summer. Uh, those were clearly the two best players. And right. they met in an epic struggle. Uh, in the final in August. And I'm really looking forward uh, to seeing another struggle between these two guys again. I, so I tend to agree with you. And I think that probably if you pulled most of the players in the field anonymously and they weren't allowed to bet on themselves, they'd probably agree too. But but let's bring up the whole field and talk about that. Because I think just in the interest of whatever you want to call it, right? Um, playing spoiler or just, you know, allowing ourselves to think outside of the box here. There are some guys who may have something to say about it, right? We know that Wesley So has uh, made the final in the SEC the last two years in the absence of Magnus, and he has been the – he's had some very close matches against Hikaru. But then also over the last year, he kind of had his own breakthroughs. I think you and I know Wesley pretty well, and, like, it's been, it's been sometimes for Wesley – not necessarily his level of chess or his accuracy, but his confidence. The fact that he won the World Fisher Random Chess title, he's now won an event where he beat Magnus head to head. Yeah, I, I was gonna, I was gonna mention that as, as yeah. a big turning point because the Fisher Random Championship, e even though it it had some attributes of, of more like a, a show match, right? It it was really a one sided affair, and I think it's the only time. We've seen someone crush Magnus ever. At anything. Yeah. No, seriously. Uh, so Wesley's performance in that uh, Fisher Random World Championship was amazing. And, um, and yeah, um, he's, he, he's done very well. He won the U.S. Championship right. yesterday. Right. So I think Wesley has to get there. And then obviously the other person everyone talks about, of course, is, is the, the, the other Iranian wonder kid, right? Uh, Ferugia, we, we had the preview article come out, seven things to watch for. And one of the questions was, you know, if Ferugia is the future, when is the future now kind of thing, right? We know that he's a monster, but your thoughts on that and and um, whether Ferugia or anybody else in the field is another dark horse besides Wesley So. Well, I, I just spent uh, a week or two in, in Stavanger um, where I, I got to, to meet up with all the top guys, including uh, Ale Ressa um for for an over the board tournament the norway chess tournament and uh Oliresa was just amazing there right i mean he 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 honestly should have won the tournament uh he just choked massively twice against magnus but other than that he was uh he was a star and he finished second uh, in competition with the very best with fabiano carana with um, with those guys uh, in the field, so uh, I I'm very impressed by 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 him, and um, it's going to be interesting to see what he brings to the table. Uh, but I will say that my impression from the Norway Chess Tournament is that he struggles against Magnus. Uh, he made two huge. Uh, mistakes um, against Magnus, and and that in the end cost him the tournament because right. he finished he finished just inches behind Magnus. And had he not made those blunders in the in the heads up um, games, he he would have uh, he would have won the event. I couldn't agree more. I think that there were and then there were other interesting storylines from that where. Um, Magnus ultimately it did win the event, but also there was uh, the one loss that he's had in very, very, very long time, right? I, I don't remember the exact math, but more than more than two years, I think, right? And that was to young Christoph Duda, who's also in the field. But um, let's let's go back to our bracket because one of the things you said reminded me of something we should talk about. Then, if 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 in a lot of people's eyes, the two potential dark horses are guys like Wesley So and Ali Reza Ferusha, then I don't really think there's any argument to be made that of the top two seeds, Hikaru and Magnus, 
Hikaru has the tougher road to the final, right, at, at this point. I mean, would you agree about that? And what would be your thoughts on him having to face not just Ferrugia in the second round, but if he gets by that, Wesley So in the uh, in the semis, even if he's even to make it to the finals? Honestly, I hadn't really uh, considered who I thought were going to be the main people uh, beyond Magnus and Hikaru. But your arguments have convinced me that Aliresa and Wesley are ones uh, to look out for. And uh, as I can tell from the brackets, uh, if Hikaru wins the first match, he will uh, probably face Aliresa. He, he has Wesley also on uh, his side of the bracket. That's, that's, a tough, that's a tough pairing for him. Yep. Uh, but as I did say initially... I, I think Hikaru has proven himself. Uh, I think the fact that he's won the title Tuesday tournament several times uh, during the, this uh, Corona period is incredible. Winning the title Tuesday is, is one of the most difficult feats in internet chess. And Hikaru's done it again and again and right. again. Uh, so he he has a reputation uh, in internet chess, and he deserves the reputation he's yep. uh, he's gotten. Well, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome either either way. Um, like you said, I think uh, Hikaru, you could argue, qualified three times over for this event because of his performances in the title Tuesday while it was part of the Grand Prix being the previous champion. And then he even won our, uh, our super Swiss event, which took place over a weekend, which was crazy and had all kinds of strong players. So I agree. And I think that I'm sure guys like Jan de Pomnishi, uh, or Tim, you have, uh, you know, blitz and bullet specialists on the right side. will say, hold on, we're not going to make Magnus's road, uh, so easy to the final, but, but, um, for sure when you see Perugia and so on that side, but, all right, let's let's talk a little bit about the matchups. We'll, we'll, we'll shift our focus away from Magnus and Hikaru for a minute. And just talk about in chronological order what the first three matches are that are coming up. We got MBL versus Nihal Sarin on Sunday. Um, give us your that's the first one kicking us off. Give us your thoughts on whether the young uh, the young man from India maybe maybe shocks the world and 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 gives MBL a run for his money. What are your thoughts on that? I must say I played Nihal when he was twelve years old, and he beat me. Didn't I, I was a seasoned grandmaster, and I lost to this twelve-year-old. Did I? Did he, I play he, you when you were twelve, though? Sorry. Did I play you when you were twelve? <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, no. This uh, Indian kid, he is—he's a monster. Yeah. And frankly, I—I I think this is a toss-up. I think this could go uh, both ways. Uh, Maxim is a great blitz player. Uh, but I'm not sure he has adapted uh, very well to playing online as opposed to playing over the board. I would say over the board, Maxim is a big favorite, but online, he he has struggled a bit more. Maxim has been a loyal player for the for the con blockbusters that in the Pro Chess League, yep. um, but he has always he has never really taken those matches very seriously uh, and i feel he also finished in in the last place in, in one of these tournaments during the the magnus carlson chess tour this this summer right. uh, i feel uh he is not at his best concentration when playing online and and that makes this uh, a very even matchup Okay, interesting. Well, I'm sure the YouTube chat loves hearing that. I see Ash is over there on YouTube saying he thinks Nihal is a favorite against almost anybody in the event besides Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura. I don't know if I can is go YouTube that. YouTube all Indians these days? I, I think that YouTube has a lot of fans from India for sure. So, but um, but yeah, I mean for sure, I, I agree that Saren is uh, is capable of the upset. And I'll say this though, I think that even though everything you said is true, um. Uh, Hammer, one of the things we always are reminded about every year in this event is how increment is different than a lot of the blitz these guys play. And match play is different than what we see in a title Tuesday. So I guess I'd still be surprised. I feel like Soren has one more year before he's really in that on that level with guys like MBL. And usually the, the multiple games against one person kind of exposes the chess strength, especially when increment maybe makes up for some of the time scrambles. But, but we'll see. I mean, great predictions. Let's move on to the second one. 
and talk about uh, Magnus and Mogsulu. I'll say this. What does Mogsulu have to do not to get adopted? He's he's never getting adopted. Okay. Losing 10 <laughs> games in a row just doesn't happen at this level. I'm, I'm um, kidding. Yeah, go ahead. What, what, what yeah. are your thoughts on this matchup? Uh, I think Magnus is going to win. I think he's going to win convincingly. Right. Um, and um, there's not really much uh, Parham can, can do about it. He's uh, an extremely talented player. He's Interestingly, he, he plays his own openings. He has a very unique, creative style. Um, but the thing is, that kind of play works against people who are like super booked up, who know all of these classic mainstream openings. But Magnus, he just knows everything. Yep. Um, and, and he's able to deal with unconventional openings because he's a master of that himself. Um, and, and I think he's going to be a con convincing uh, winner on Monday. Well, before we move on, I just want to say, because you made a comment about Maxime, maybe not necessarily taking online chess as seriously as some of the others. And I just got an alert. We get the hero alert. Ignore my, ignore my three-year-old daughter there. But we got a Leon Beast just started playing on chess.com. So maybe Maxime was watching and said, you know what, Hammer's right. I do need to take online chess a little more seriously. Not sure if you guys could see that, but there you go. If you get, if you get the, the alert there that uh, Maxime is, is currently playing on chess.com, getting ready for his match on Sunday. All right. The last one we're going to preview just because we could preview all, all eight of the first round matchups, but we're just trying to set the tone for week one, everybody. We've got November 1st, MBL Sarin, November 2nd, Carlson versus Mogsudlu. And then you've got Ferrugia versus Fedoseev. I'm going to say that even though I believe Ferrucia is is the big favorite, I, I give I give the big fish a little more of a nod than uh, than people think. As a guy who's played so well in the title two days, he's just shown that people can overlook him. One of the few guys who's ever you know stolen stolen an event from Hikaru, right? Um, when they really got down to the finals there, when everyone's on camera and, and playing for the big prizes. So, but what are your thoughts on this matchup? You talked about Ferrucia's performance in Norway, and uh, what do you think we're going to see on Wednesday? Well, as you say, Fedoseyev is a really strong opponent and he's going to go into this thinking he has a chance uh, to win it. Um, I, I think I would go for Alihesa because he was just so fantastic in Norway chess, which tells me that he's developed beyond being this kind of uh, online phenom. He, he's, uh, he's just good in, in all phases and forms uh, of the game. Uh, and I really thought it was interesting seeing Alireza playing against Magnus. Uh, he played a Queen's Gambit declined. And of course, Queen's Gambit is all the rage this week. Um, and I, I was uh, really interested in, in seeing how Alireza exposed himself playing uh, a strategic positional opening mm -hmm. against the king of that very kind of chess right. um, against Magnus Carlsen. Uh, Alergesa has usually been considered a very attacking player, uh, that he needs to play aggressive, that that's his, his best uh, style. Uh, but I was seriously impressed how he faced Magnus by uh, playing... Uh, to Magnus's strengths in, in some way, but it's not really about what Magnus is good at. It's about what Alireza is not so good at. Right. And he was willing to try and get better at strategic play by playing strategically against the master himself, uh, Magnus. Uh, and he, he managed, he, he got a draw. Uh, yeah. It was a great game from Magnus, but uh, Alireza just played brilliantly. Uh, and, he, and he got a draw from it. And I think my point is Ali Reza's confidence to do that, to, to expose himself in areas where he knows he needs improvement and, and do that in very important matchups against Magnus uh, and at the very top level. I, I think that just speaks to a fantastic mentality uh, and um, and he's just he's getting better by the minute, uh, and and so I think even though Fedoseyev is a fantastic player, uh, Alireza just he seems to be improving 
uh, at a yeah. very nice and steady rate. It's a great point. It's a sign of good things to come for his for his mindset, for like you said, for Ruger's willingness to do that. And uh, for those who, now you've heard our thoughts about it, we, we threw up a poll over there on our Twitch chat for those to vote. I see you over there on Chess TV too. Diamond member Arthur JW wants to know our thoughts on Nepo versus Aroni and Duda versus Caruana. Uh, indeed. I mean, we'll bring up the bracket one more time before we let, we let Hammer go and just say for sure, we highlighted the first week, but every one of these first round matchups is going to be incredible. Um, you know, you should obviously mark, mark your calendars for each one. The full schedule is up at speedchesschampionship.com. If our team doesn't mind sharing a link to that, you can go mark your full calendar. I mean, let me just ask you. So we gave on those three, and now I'm just going to give you your, 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 uh, your, your final words here on the first round. They mentioned Carwana Duda, Nepo Aronian, um, which, by the way, is a rematch of an epic match from a couple of years ago. Uh, Jan and Levon uh, gave us a thriller um a while back but your thoughts on the matchup you can't pick one of the first three we mentioned the uh meaning you can't pitch it pick mbl or the carlson or the uh Perugia match what's your first round matchup you're most looking forward to uh that's a tricky one you can't pick the magnus one because you're going to be with me on monday doing commentary for that match. and i'm really looking forward to that monday 6 p.m also time uh now you can say whatever time it is where, where you're it's from. It's 9 a.m. Pacific uh, here on the West Coast. Um, I'll say I really am looking forward to the Artemia versus Geary matchup. I think that's going to be intriguing. And and again, I don't, I guess I, I'm picking the ones that I think are like a total coin flip. I also think Jan yeah, and LeBron. I, I want, I want to, in that case, I, I want to highlight the Fabiano versus Duda. Okay. Uh, I think Fabiano, it's very clear to me, he's the second best player in the world. Uh, but he hasn't been uh, as good uh, in online chess as he right. is over the board. Uh, but there are clear signs that he has tried to improve that. Uh, and he's uh, had some, some good performances, uh, but not anything stellar. Uh, I, I think uh, Fabiano doing well in the Speed Chess Championship is, is something he's definitely striving for just to prove to everyone that he can play well in blitz and he can play well on the line. And, and I'm looking forward to, to that matchup. Yeah, it's a great point. Robert, Robert Hess, uh, often, often my partner in crime over here has made, made gone out of his way to say that several times hammer that, that he knows that Fabi has been working super hard in his training regimen to improve his rapid and blitz. And maybe, maybe uh, again, the, uh, the nod that needed to, or the poke that needed to happen was him playing so well against Magnus in 2018 as was well chronicled, only to to uh, to kind of get steamrolled in the rapid, right? So it's certainly that will be interesting to see how Fabiano does this year. Maybe surprise everybody by beating uh, young Christoph Duda, who is the favorite in that matchup. Um, all right, well, this has been awesome. We see, uh, I see you over there on Chess TV Math, so saying that uh, it's 3 a.m. for you in Australia on Sunday. Well, that's what they make coffee for, okay? And uh, and and you can you can get up and join us, but. Hammer, this has been awesome, man. It's so great to have you back. I can't wait to be your partner on Monday as we watch Magnus Carlsen uh, and his return to the chess.com speed chess championship. And uh, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Bye, guys. See you, man.
And we are back now with the one and only fun master, Mike, Mike Klein of chesskid.com. First of all, did anybody beat you today? You were on right before us with the show, Beat Fun Master Mike. Anyone, anyone beat you? No, but today I got to play right side up. On Wednesday, I had to play two games upside down because I lost <laughs> a bet. What are you doing to yourself? That was hilarious. Um, seriously, for those who, go ahead. Oh, I thought you were about to say something. Um, anyway, for those who don't know, Mike does a show, um, or many shows for Chess Kid. And uh, if you happen to have kids, nieces, nephews, grandchildren, whatever, and they're not using chess.com, that is a, a you problem, as I would like to say. And Mike is doing amazing stuff over there. Before we get to what really matters with Chess Kid, you have the floor, sir, to talk about the great season that your Atlanta Braves had. Uh, it was great up until a certain game seven. Um, it was pretty frustrating. You know, I was actually in Mexico. And uh, it was great because they love baseball in Mexico. So it was yeah. for once I was traveling internationally and not having a hard time finding the sporting events. But uh, what can I say? Young pitching staff. We really, you know, with no off days for a seven game series, we only had like two and a half starting pitchers. Yeah. So it was going to be tough, but uh, proud of my boys. Los Bravos. Well, as uh, as uh, David Ortiz said, if the Dodgers weren't going to win this year, what else can they buy? right? That's my first, my first shade. You thought 2020 was bad. And then the Dodgers won the world series and it just got worse. So anyway, uh, but for those who don't know, uh, jokes aside, I'm actually a pretty big baseball fan with Mike. I like to tease him. And part of the show is just getting to know people. Uh, so yeah, Mike and I often share our love over baseball, though. I don't take fantasy baseball as seriously as you do. Do you want to like confess about that? How, I also, I mean, you, you know. Well, just like Los Bravos, I also had a collapse in fantasy baseball this year. So <laughs> 2020, that's what they say. 2020. Yeah, 2020 just became like a, a, a thing you can say to express something went pear-shaped, as my friends in the UK would say. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to let you take uh, the wheel here for a minute, and you and I will have some back and forth, but why don't you take us through, um, well, it's the state of chesskid.com here. So what would you like to leave with in regards to letting people know all the awesome things that are going on over at our Scholastic Extension site there at Chess Kid? Well, I think I'm supposed to start the speech by doing like what our president always does, where he says, the state of chess kid is strong. I think that <laughs> that's how every state of the union address starts in the U.S. for those of you that are not American. Um, well, the biggest thing we've been doing the last couple of months, and we've got a couple more uh, things coming up, are big events. So coming up in two weeks is going to be the Texas State Chess Kid Online Championship, where we're expecting more than a thousand kids from all over Texas to play in this event. And then... Kind of big news. I guess you didn't know this, Danny, but we're breaking it here because I've not actually released the Chess Kid article. But uh, we are going to be the online hosts for the U.S. Chess K-12 Showdown. Right. Now, this is, I guess you'd say, the replacement event for the Great Nationals, although U.S. Chess Federation is careful to say it's not officially a national championship. But Chess Kid will be the host server for the kindergarten through fifth grade sections. And then Chess.com will be the host server for the sixth grade through 12th grade sections. It's going to be all weekend, uh, second weekend of December, and uh, there's actually going to be set round times. So uh, if you are a chess kid in the U.S. and you normally fly to Florida in December to play in a chess tournament, you're probably going to play it on chess kid or chess.com. Um, yep. and, uh, and one more event, A, that I can't actually announce just yet, but we're going to go even bigger than that coming up in 2021. So I'll let you know when that becomes official. All right. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about the uh, so you just mentioned the the U.S. Nationals. And I think, again, it's it's it means a lot to everybody because what we've got is a, uh, you know, a year where this whole pandemic thing is not going away. And if anything, round two seems to be rearing its ugly head in an even even stronger form um, right now. And so, you know, is this something that Chess Kid is continuing to do, right? Looking to partner with federations, bring what would previously be over the board chess experiences for our future generation online. And so, you know, the USF is a big one. I know you can't talk about the one in 2021 that I know about, but what, you know, what is Chess Kid just doing in general to work with organizations and help them help them bring these, these tournaments and club experiences to the web? That's a good question. Imagine if you're a kid and you're getting stronger at chess and working hard all year, but you have no marquee event to play in. That's why Chess Kid is having these big events. I released an article on Chess Kid a few weeks ago, basically explaining to big organizations and federations what we can provide. But we basically handle a lot of the registration, the creation of accounts, putting them in the right group. We actually have a live call in if parents have trouble getting their child in the tournament. So we handle that sort of live real time help desk. Of course, we do fair play on the back end. We help with awards, results, tie breaks, 
Um, we sometimes handle the live commentary. So we basically kind of hold the organizer's hand and are true partners as they navigate the online world. And uh, you and I know, Danny, we wouldn't have our titles and stature today if there wasn't over the board tournaments. We all For want sure. those to return. But until that day happens, we're the best era, AirSats replacement. And uh, we're happy to be able to give kids uh, these really big events to, to be training for and to be recognized for. Well said. And uh, no, for sure. We would not be here chess professionals. We wanted to be all, everyone wanted to be world champion at some point, but even chess businessmen without it. So super important. The other things that are super important, I want to talk a little bit about some of the tools you guys did. Take me through the computer analysis because you can confirm privately that I was a giddy, giddy schoolgirl when that when you and Carrie showed that to me, the chess.com analysis tools kind of being given their own chess kid spin. And, and how much are coaches enjoying this, the, the chess kid analysis tools? Well, you know, Danny, I'm an advocate for coaches. So every time they want a feature, I'm like, yeah, I want to give that to you. Okay. Can't always do it. But luckily this time I was able to. Basically the chess kid analysis board serves two functions. Number one, when a child plays a game on chess kid and wants to know what he or she did wrong, the analysis board steps right in. And just like the chess.com version, we don't have all the fancy bells and whistles, Danny, but we're catching up to right. the chess.com version. And then the other thing is, we said for years, Danny, you know this, I, this is a line I borrow from you, that we're not trying to take over in-person teaching, but suddenly every chess teacher in the world needs a digital demo board. Every chess teacher knows what I'm talking about when I say demo board. And the chess kit analysis board functions just like that. You can highlight squares, draw arrows, and really importantly, you can save your positions forever and name them. So if you've got your five favorite fork positions, you can save them in your account in the chess kid analysis board and have them at the ready. It actually makes you a more efficient teacher because I don't know about you, Danny, but I'm always the one that's fumbling with the pieces and you've got your back to the kids. And, you know, as long as you are meeting with the kids online, the analysis board, uh, it actually makes you look more dexterous. It's a good point. And honestly, it's, it reminds me that uh, we've been, well, preparing to, to launch an even bigger tool to kind of make sure that everyone has all, all the features they could ever imagine in regards to saving their games and, and adding favorites and analysis. But that's something that we're working in tandem. And Chess Kid is even a little bit ahead of Chess.com in, in that area. Um, speaking of things Chess Kid is ahead of the world on, we've got, uh, once again, another hour of chess coming up. Talk a little bit about that. We, you know, we kind of started this a few years ago when based on the idea of the hour of code, which um, is something that schools nationwide in the U.S. and I think worldwide now, everyone stops what they're doing and teaches kids how to write code and, and maybe be prepared for their developing job uh, skills that will help them in the workforce later on. And now the hour of chess, is this the third year that we've run it on Chess Kid or talk a little bit about what, what's coming up here? I've actually lost count. I think it's at least year four, but basically okay. the, the idea, Danny, is exactly what you said. We want every kid in a school to play chess for an hour, full stop. Uh, it can be puzzles, can be live games, can be just learning how to play. You know, a lot of schools have a chess club that's attended by 20, 30, if you're lucky, maybe 100 kids. We want all of the kids in a school to be availed to the educational benefits of chess. I think chess is at least as viable as an educational tool as music or art. Um, I can't tell you what music or art does to the brain. I can't tell you what chess <laughs> does to the brain, but I know it's not harmful, I'll put it that way. Um, so if you sign up from November 2nd through 6th, there's a sign up form. If you go to chesskid.com slash articles, you will see it. And you'll also be entered into a drawing for your school to be eligible to win 500 gold memberships. And I think last time we had it, we actually have it once every semester, Danny. We're getting about three or 400 schools each time and it keeps growing. Um, so it's kind of a neat movement and it's very yep. low stress. It's about participation, not about winning. And uh, I hope more schools take part this time. I agree. And it's a huge mo movement. And there's, even though it's fun when we do social media stuff on chess.com and, you know, you share things we're doing with events or you talk about, you know, whatever is going on over the board chess, I would argue that pictures of kids playing chess is, are a lot cuter. And when the hour of chess is going on, you literally see this scene of just thousands of, of kids and hundreds and hundreds of schools all coming together to play chess online. It's, it's, it's a pretty, pretty awesome thing. So um, we, we had an event recently with the battle of the Americas, right? Tell us, tell us what happened there. And uh, is Jessica going to be doing more, more events like that. Yeah, that's a good question, Danny. Now, unlike these big events, like with the U.S. Chess Federation, we're going to get two, 3,000 kids. This was more of a curated event to feature two big programs. One of them, representing the USA, 
with Spire Legacy School in New York City. Shout out to my old boss, Sean O'Hanlon, my former colleague, Fritz Gaspar, who are both coaching at the school. Uh, it's also where Brewington Hardaway goes to school. He's one of our featured players. You know him as Brewmaster on Chess Kid. And uh, we had six kids from Spire play against six kids from Latin America because we just brought on Women's International Master Yvette Garcia as the Chess Kid Director of Spanish. Um, and so we had five different countries of Latin America represented amongst the six kids, um, Mexico, Bolivia, I'm not going to be able to name all of them, so I don't want to embarrass myself. Um, but USA won eight to four. We're going to have more of these international matches. And Danny, here's the good news. I won this bet, which means Yvette Garcia has to make me chilequiles. Uh, that's a new term I just learned in Mexico. Uh, <laughs> she's got to make me chilequiles, and uh, somehow she has to mail them to the U.S. So yeah, I'll... I was going to say that might get stuck in customs somehow. So maybe we'll just have to wait to the next chess.com meetup, right? When we have uh, Culture Night, which is one of the fun things we do, by the way. Random, random note to chess.com meetup. Another sad thing that didn't get to happen this year. Everyone brings different dishes and things, so we'll just make a note of that. Uh, last thing, Mike. I know you guys are just working hard all the time, adding features. We mentioned analysis and other stuff, but. I think the, the last big one to really to really give a shout out to was the, the updates that came to the iOS app. Everyone is mobile first these days. So talk a little bit about the, the recent uh, pushes that we made and the, and the Chess Kit iOS app, especially the improvements to bringing live tournaments online. Well, I'm not working hard. Uh, Danny, I'm playing chess upside down. I think our, yeah, yeah. our, our like devs me. are working I'm, hard. I'm on Chess TV, but everyone else is working hard. Um, yeah, we just had a really great update to the Chess Kid iOS app. Uh, we have a, a rating now of 4.7 out of 5, which is higher than my Uber rating. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm sitting there quietly, you know, lying when I say that the air conditioning is on a good level. Um, anyway, uh, shout out to, to Jerson, who uh, fixed up our, our app, made it look spiffy. And here's the important thing. Kids, you can now play our live tournaments on the app, uh, which is super important because so many kids are playing on iPads at their school. Uh, they need to be able to play tournaments on the app. That's the biggest feature improvement, but it looks crisper, cleaner. It doesn't crash very often. Uh, and uh, it's just a much better, sleeker version because every, you know, kids are all moving toward the app based environment these days. Yep. Well, uh, it is, and it is actually super, super clean and super easy. And uh, it's more fun for parents when you don't always have to log them into the family computers, like go, you know, go get the iPad and, and you can do everything you want to do as a chess kid. So um, anyway, those... well, exciting stuff, man. Uh, we'll, we'll catch up again, obviously in a, in a future state of chess.com. Uh, Hopefully we're talking about, um, actually, I can't say we're talking about an Atlanta Braves rebound because won't, we won't be, you know, we'll be in spring training then if world willing. Um, but uh, anyway, thanks again for all the work over there and uh, best of luck coming up here with the big USCF events that, that uh, we're partnering with in December and, uh, and take care. Thanks. Good luck uh, trying to teach Robbie Ray how to throw a strike. And uh, from one chess, chief chess officer to another, I Burr. bequeath the show back to you, good sir. See ya.
And we are now joined by uh, the the original number one himself, our chief executive officer, Eric, chief everything officer. How you doing? I'm doing great, Danny. Thanks. All right. Well, this is the first time you and I have been talking about doing this for a while. Originally, stateofchess.com was actually your gig, right? Your opportunity to kind of open the doors and just interact with the community. I took it over because it's easier for me to make, you know, an idiot of myself on camera. Um, and uh, but now we're kind of bringing it back. And so we've got some questions from the community. Full disclosure, you don't know what questions I'm about to ask you. Correct. Correct. Don't act so serious. This is I'm nervous, man. I'm on camera. I'm never no. on camera. Well, let me remind everybody um, that uh, obviously you can continue to ask questions in chat. We've got our, our moderators and community managers. Shout out to Tom. Looking for it. We may try to add some questions on the fly here. Uh, but otherwise, these are questions that have been gathered uh, from earlier today, but also on Discord. So if you have not joined the Ask the Chiefs Discord or the chess.com server on Discord, now's your chance to do it. And you know that it is a, it is a real thing. We're going to be bringing these questions um, to you and answering them in real time. So Eric, our first questions, I got, we got some easy ones, some product questions, okay. some things that'll be fun, give you a chance to talk about what we're doing. So a lot of people love the bots. The bots have hit, they're a huge hit. Questions are being asked, are we going to add the ability to play variants against the bots uh, more than Chess 960? Obviously, combining chess.com slash variants popularity with the bots, any thoughts or plans on that? Uh, that's actually a great point. And it's not on the roadmap, but now it is. How's Officially. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you guys don't know what Eric's roadmap looks like, it looks like when... Um, your like daughter is trying to read an old school physical map, not even Google and give you directions. It gets a little bit, a little bit crazy. And uh, there's a lot on there. there we have so many up. members who have so many great ideas. We can't keep up with the pace and chess is such a deep game. It's like infinitely interesting, the stuff we can build. So you, you do enough combinations of this feature with that feature and this idea with that one. And like, it's infinite and it's beautiful and overwhelming at the same time. Uh, it's so true, especially with the new variants coming along. It's like it's not going to get any easier. But um, that question was from Arrow Chocolate Bar. Thank you for our, our Discord. The next one is from Irv124 on our Discord. Keeping on the same thing, um, wants to ask if there are any other plans to bring more variants, um, the ones that aren't maybe currently at, at variants. So we'll keep it keep it light here on the product. Are there any other variants on the roadmap? Um, for I mean, the, Go ahead. the honest truth is you can create almost any variant you want. If you go to chess.com slash variants, and you go to a custom game, you can almost create any variant that you would like to see. I mean, to your heart's content. We've added so many. The hard part is, and this is the honest truth about variants, is there are so many, there, there are very passionate variant players, but it just represents still a very small number of people. Right. And so we, we have an, a great team working on them, um, but the number of users we have playing variants is still just minuscule compared to the number of people who play standard chess or 960. Um, and so as much as we are in favor of it and pushing on it, there's, you know, it's just such a small user base compared to the, the, the standard players. That doesn't mean we don't want to do more with it. It's just the amount of allocation of time and, and energy. So that's up. So next one I'm bumping up because it was such a cool idea. I had never thought of it. And now I want to make it a feature request from me, but Alison Diaz on YouTube wants to know if we have tool, we have plans to bring our, uh, some of our analysis tools to mobile. Some of the things we don't have, like the ability to, to highlight squares, uh, to save games you play, uh, like, like we currently have the ability to do, people can save games and analysis into their own library. So what are the plans as far as bringing analysis tools to mobile in the future? Those are, th that's, uh, that's a great question. And uh, that's, that's a new one for the roadmap too. I'm not entirely sure how the highlighting and arrows and analysis tools would work in there, yeah. but um, given that the touch interface is somewhat limited, but it is, it is very interesting. Uh, and, and I like where you're going with that. As for saving games into like special collections and libraries, I can't say. Can't say just yet because maybe, or maybe not working on something like it. Um, uh, in the time of Nick has a very, uh, a very serious question that everyone can relate to. How does he turn off blunders? He can't find it in his settings. Yeah. If you go to uh, chess.com slash secret membership, <laughs> uh, you can join <laughs> and buy a special membership, which a lot. No, no, obviously not. Um, if I knew that I would turn that on for myself first and be the first beta user. Um, I love chess. I play lots of daily. I play tons of one minute 
and I make blunders all the time, but I like to refer to them as learning moments. Learning well, moments, right? Spoken like a true dad. Um, well, all right. So we've had we've had some fun ones here. Um, a lot of what ends up happening on this show, as you know, man, is ends up being me sort of uh, uh, setting up setting up questions on a tee that are often related to fair play and cheating, and and doing our best to, to hit yeah. it out of the park, knowing that it's a uh, sometimes it's a curveball. So the unnecessary baseball reference, because I know you love baseball. Here we go. Um, you know, and and they often hear from me on this, so I'll let you. Yeah, you know, take the questions, but also from in the time of Nick, he asked um, one earlier today where he said, I'll summarize it as how close do we pay attention to over the board cheating? And his direct question was, if someone were to get caught in over the board cheating, would we ever consider uh, going out of our way to take action against them on our site? And, you know, obviously you and I know that this is, there's a lot going on with fair play right now. So answer that however, however you uh, think is appropriate. Oh man, we do pay attention. We do know about it. We do talk with event uh, organizers. We talk with federations and we're in touch about that. And we do take action uh, from uh, also on our site when, when it's found. We don't always take action publicly, um, but we do, we do track it. Uh, yeah, I'm being careful with what I'm saying, obviously. There's a lot to this. Fair play and cheating is, it's like the existential threat of chess. I mean, if that, if we can't keep that in check, then it, then the game is just bots and it's not fun. And so we are, we have so much energy going into this and we feel so strongly about protecting the game that we love so much. And so fair play is like top of mind for me, like every moment of every day, the number of cases we see, the 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 largeness of the cases, the 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 depth in which this is playing out, it's huge. And unfortunately, it can't play out all in the public. And so I'm limited at somewhat what I can say here, but I want everyone to know like how important it is for us. And we we aren't compromising. We're just not compromising because we can't. Yeah, and I'll only add to that, like Eric, not not able to talk about some of the sensitive stuff, but I will say that not only are we aware of it and in, in talks all the time, but we are doing everything we can in, in the direction of um, how best to work with with the governing bodies of our game. We'll, we'll say specifically FIDE um, as the international governing body and the USCF It's one of the reasons we host so many you know, of their events. We're doing everything we can to to make sure that you know, they're, they're supportive and aware of, of the actions we take and that, and that we can in turn support them as best we can, knowing that we come at it from slightly different angles, right? But the, I believe the future is brighter than people would think in terms of our cooperation. And yeah. I'm believing at that mainly because if and when we do have maybe something that is a little more concrete, we want to make sure that we can share it as openly and transparently as possible without giving cheaters an edge. And one thing that sounds like we're alluding, I'll just speak for Eric there, is sometimes sometimes we don't go further into it is because we don't want them to know necessarily what our workflows are or what our procedures yeah. are because, you know, it might it might help um, help people do dishonest things. So um, I also want to follow up and say, if I seem a little somber about it, it's not because I am dis because I'm discouraged or dismayed at our ability to handle it. We can handle it. What hurts my heart is knowing that people do cheat, they make that decision and then they get caught and it's the heartache and the web that of, of denials and parents and friends and all this stuff that comes with it and it breaks my heart, but we're, we are better at it than ever. We have so many people who do confess to it and the people, but it's the heartache of seeing, frankly, of seeing people fall into it where they feel like for some reason they feel justified in one moment of doing one move of cheating. And then it becomes the next move and then it becomes the next game. And then suddenly their accounts closed and this account that they've been playing on for five years is suddenly closed and their friends know it and everyone sees it. And so it's, we're really, we're really good at this. And it just breaks my heart because I know the pain that it causes those people and that it's something that they fall into. So I would just say, whoever is just for a second thinking of cheating, don't do it. You are going to get caught. Your account's going to get closed. And then it's sad for everyone. We don't want to close accounts. We want everyone to enjoy chess, but we also have to protect the game. So 
that's my that's why I, if i seem sad about it that's why yeah, well said. I'm I'm gonna. There, there's a lot of questions coming in here, and just remind everybody we appreciate it. We may or may not get to all of them. Sometimes we're maybe grouping answers, um, you know, together. Um, I'm gonna jump to one, and I'll just answer it because Cheesy Driver asked whether to encourage fair play if there's an option to only play against other premium members. That actually already is an option. Uh, you may not be aware of it, but you can actually change that setting for yourself. That's not to say that premium members, you know, don't sometimes break the rules, obviously, and, and even title players, as you guys know. Um, and I'm, I'm now going to quickly answer Tiger Slav's question with the public discussion about Tigran Petrosian. It is a public one, so I can say the name, but I'll say there's really not much more we have to say on that. We took action and, and we're moving forward. And, um, you know, we wish everybody the best, regardless of the controversy. And uh, so, yeah, so not much more to say on that. But yes, you can already control your experience and play premium members if that's what you're into. So the other thing I'll say on that note is we do a lot behind the scenes of who we match people with in on the site when you are looking for a game. So for new players coming in and we don't know their history, we, we have a different matching than if you're a longstanding member. Um, and so already you should be getting opponents with the same kind of history and the history means that they're more less likely to suddenly start cheating and newer players get matched against each other. Um, so it's just, we are doing things already automatically in that direction. Yeah. On that note, we, uh, we didn't even mention that when I did the product review earlier, but newer players now even have the option to play as a guest for those who want to do sure. that, which is maybe not something everyone is aware of because you're a member, you're watching the show. You don't need yeah. a guest play account, but that's also a thing. Yeah. Um, I, want, I want to stay on this topic slightly shifting before we get to some more fun questions. Last one being asked because it comes up a lot, Eric. People have heard me talk about it, but a very long question from FAB9 on Twitch being summarized as, can you explain caps one more time? Explain what the accuracy is that people are getting on a game by game basis, what it's meant to be used for, what it's not meant to be seen as, and um, give people your, the way you would say it, I've said it my way uh, in terms of what, what our accuracy score really is about. Right. It, it's a great question. CAPS is the computer aggregate accuracy precision score, and it really has to do with how closely you are matching to the top recommended moves for engines. Now, there's so much that more that goes into that. I mean, I myself have played some very high CAPS games because of you don't need to brag. You don't need I'm, to brag. I'm doing the brag because <laughs> I'm not a great player. I'm like a 1600 player, but I have played some games at a high level um, because of the situation that was going on. And, you know, what, you know, obvious se long sequences of obvious mates or, or end games. So your ac accuracy scores can go very high. Um, and so that's fine. I, I played an accurate game. Yay for me. I've also played some some uh, low digits uh, accuracy games because I have. And so it doesn't, one single game doesn't really necessarily tell you enough about what's going on. And so it's not an indicator of fair play. Now, if you were to see somebody scoring, you know, 99s game after game after game after game, you could make some inferences. These are not necessarily, however, related to how we do our fair play and anti-cheating stuff. There are some correlated things, but there is a lot that's not. CAPS was designed to take accuracy, to put it, to take something that's deep and statistical and put it into kind of a, cram it in a little bit crudely into a zero to 100 score, because that's what we as humans and test takers and students of our lives are used to doing. But it doesn't really capture the nuance of what's going on. So it's a little bit of a, a rougher, score and you shouldn't read too much into it as to definitely do, don't read too much into it as a single game of fair play. Um, but it does give you an indication. We are also now rolling out a new cap score, which is different, which is calculated differently. Um, we've tr tried to fit the numbers to the curves a little bit better of what we're seeing for, for human play. So you will over the next uh, month or two see some new cap scores coming out that should be adjusted. Uh, some lower scores will be a little higher. Some of the higher scores will be a little lower and you'll start, it, it should be, a, as we've gotten more data and reflected more on this, we've got some new, new curves and new scores coming out. It's probably more than you guys wanted to hear, um, but there it is. 
No, I think it's super helpful. And again, we, we say it a lot because it is, it's a very cool thing and everyone, everyone loves it. Right. We know grandmasters to, you know, my son playing on, everyone loves to just click on it and, and, yeah. and see what it is. And I think for people to understand that one game is never something we would take action on in terms of fair play anyway. And so right. don't think about it in terms of, in terms of that. Um, one uh, funny question I'm just going to answer from Paul McCoy on Twitch wants to know if it's possible to set up two bots against each other to play in the future. Eric, do we have a tool for that? We don't have a tool for that. But we uh, kind of do. Automate, right? Oh, well, I that's would... a different feature. And they're not really our kind of personality bots. Um, but it is an interesting, it's an interesting question to see. And maybe, maybe possible. It would be fun. As long um, as you don't pair Danny bot versus a car bot you know, for the inevitable adoption. I'd be fine with that if, if we play bots against Yeah, you. I think that's a fair fail safe um, we need to put in the code. But, uh, okay, so another question then on the subject of automate from Anik0506 on Twitch. Wants to know if there's ever going to be a future where you set up the automate position and humans get to play it against each other, not just computers. I mean... I don't know where Automate's going. We put it out as an idea kind of in response to Auto Chess. Um, for those of you who don't know, Auto Chess is a game that has nothing to do with chess um, that is played in, in, you know, and there's a lot of different variations of this where you kind of put hero, like League of, League of Legends style heroes on a board and they play out. Um, and we thought, well, maybe we'll just make a, a, an Auto Chess version of actual chess. So we created chess.com slash Automate. You go and you set up your pieces and you kind of, once you've set them up, it's out of your hands. Uh, I think the next question is now, can we take that into another variant where you can set up your pieces and play out your own game? And I think that's, I think that's awesome. I think it's super fun. I think it is the next uh, version of what we want to do. Um, we've always thought this would be a fun version of chess where you could kind of just have a, a, an economy of points and set up your position how you want. And, you know, more like an army might of where, you know, you're not in set formations, but you have a set amount of resources and playing. So I think it's a great way to go. Um, it's, it's probably not an immediate thing because again, all variants um, are just played by a very small number of people, but passionately by those people. So I, I also like the idea. I love that we're just adding to your product, your product overwhelm. Don't yeah. worry. We just, we'll hug it out later. Um, I'm going to add to it right now because two questions came in, people asking for more stats. They love stats. I'm combining two questions from the yeah, twist yeah, yeah. on Discord. Our, 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 uh, our Discord, again, everybody, that's where a lot of these are coming. Please join the Discord and our community manager, Tom, can share a link to it. So the twist wants to know, when can we get some more detailed stats pages? Not just um, what we currently have, but more on variants. And on that, I'm combining someone who has specifically for all the stats that he sees for his blitz, he wants to see for his chest 960. So I'll just let you talk about, we know stats has been a huge project, right? That has a lot yeah. of hangover from different different tech we used before. So give everybody the, you know, where we're going with stats and when they can expect us to, to add some of these things. Yeah. Stats is currently a major overhaul project for us internally. Uh, if you can imagine what it's like to calculate stats for, you know, 5 million games a day being played by millions of players and having all that data. I mean, honestly, when chess.com was designed and the initial kind of framework and code was laid out, uh, it wasn't scale, you know, planned for that scale. And then even the, uh, the next version wasn't, and the next version wasn't, and we're really hitting levels that we've never expected. And so, you know, it, we're building out infrastructure and code now to handle that and to be able to do the types of st statistical queries that we want uh, the, of the types that you're asking about. And so uh, all I can say is that stats is currently being worked on. The back end piece is being revamped so we can handle more stats of every kind in a, in a more scalable way. And then we'll be layering that into the user interface so you can then see all these different stats. But um, you know, it's a pretty big over, you know, yeah. overhaul and, and undertaking. So it's not coming soon, but it is currently being worked on aggressively. Especially because every day with however many games are being played, right? As chess continues to grow, right? It makes it even harder to query and put it in, in a pretty way. So yeah. um, the guy who doesn't have to live in the world of managing these teams, I'm speaking for Eric to say it's hard. It's hard, but we're doing it's hard, it. Man. Um, it's hard. Anyway. Um, all right. We're going to wrap it up with a couple of questions. I'm going to answer. Um, well, We'll do one from math. So first on discord, because 
actually Brett, maybe let Eric handle that with what he would like to see. He, he says with chess again, growing in popularity, um, obviously there was the pod champs event that we did. Everyone and their cousin is watching the Queens gamut on Netflix right now, mm -hmm. what, which, which gets people thinking about more celebrities playing chess. So yep. he wants to know, do we have any big plans for more of these types of events in the future? I'll yeah. say yes. Yeah. And Eric, you'll say. Yeah, for sure. I mean, sure. we would love to do this. Uh, if you are a celebrity watching this show <laughs> right now, please get in touch with us. No. Um, you know, I would love to see a sports themed celebrity uh, tournament. I'd love to see a movie star themed celebrity tournament. I'd love to see all sorts of different gaming. I'd love to see whatever group of people is out there that is, you know, I would love to see these. And so we're trying to put these together. Um, and, and what's really cool is when there's people who are organically interested in chess, like the mountain or Arnold Schwarzenegger, or, you know, uh, many of the, the, the players we've already had, uh, that's super cool. Um, and so we want to try and work with those who, who already have an organic interest in chess and put together more events. That said, it's, you know, it's, it's not the easiest thing. It's hard. You can't just snap our fingers and make these events happen. There's a lot of coordination and handlers and things, but I mean, yes, your dream is my dream also. I'll yep. say that. I was going to say it was your chance to put, put requests back on me. Cause that's my department. I I'm working yeah. on that all the time and that's my job to do that. And it is, but like Eric said, we can't, I don't have, uh, we don't have as many celebrities on speed dial as you would think, right? Contrary to popular belief. Yep. Um, I'll answer the question from Discord from KB Khan wants to know if Arena Kings is coming back. I'm just going to answer that with a winky face in January 2021. You can look for everyone's favorite streaming tournament to come back. We're revamping some things and I think it's going to be even more awesome than before. Um, so that'll make Hikaru and all the streamers happy to bring Arena Kings back. Um, and then last question for you, Eric. Because I want to combine it for two. It was a great question uh, from Twitch that asked of all of your years over this whole this whole crazy thing that has been the chess.com project. What has been your favorite unins uninspected thing from the community? Um, like what is like what maybe what surprised you the most? Or what was like your favorite thing that the community, whether it was an idea they gave you or something the community did with our tools? What what would be uh, give us a, a random this was awesome when the community made me realize X. Oh man, you're now asking me about millions of members over more than 12 years. That's a lot of so uh, numbers. Whatever's on your head then. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll say this. One of my favorite things was just the response we had toward Puzzle Rush, honestly. To be able to, for us to kind of um, think about puzzles as an experience, create a hypothesis around how to make something launch it out there and just have it kind of become a cultural moment for chess to like everyone what's your puzzle rush score i really enjoyed the response that people gave that it was it was appreciative um and, and people were happy about that we're seeing some of the same things with bots a lot of i, I live so much in a product world um uh, of, of thinking about and creating new products and ideas and so for me, it's always the response to there. And we do have a lot of great ideas that come from the community. So, you know, I, and, and you may not know this, but I see so many of those ideas that come in. Whenever you go on the website and do you like make a suggestion, I see almost all of those. Um, and so I, I, I'll just say that I continue to be impressed, amazed, awed, overwhelmed by the number and uh interestingness of the of the suggestions that come in i'm so fortunate to work at a place where we have such a, an engaged community as such a passionate community and you know just just we're grateful for your support keep your ideas coming and and thanks for being there yeah and I, you just backed up things i've said many times on these shows like hey if, if you ever have a suggestion of course, if you find a bug, that's great too. But when you when you hold your mouse over that little question mark in the corner, you're all on chess.com right now. There's a little browser question mark. I say, when you do that, it literally goes to our CEO's desk. I wasn't kidding, right? He lives in the world of product and, and what our community wants. So um, uh, that's that's a fact and you should continue to do it and uh, keep keep Eric, Eric busy because his roadmap is not complicated enough. So... Um, all right, right, man. We love you. Thank you for joining. I think I think we'll continue to see the community giving us questions on Discord. And so please do that, everybody, um, for, for Eric's next appearance. And we're going to take a very quick break. When we come back, I'm going to play Danny Bot for the first time on, on stream. So don't go anywhere, everybody. And uh, Eric, thanks again for being here. Thank you.
And welcome back, everybody. Thanks for uh, thanks for being here. Before we get to some chess action with me trying to take on Danny Bot for the first time um, against against my will, uh, so to speak, I want to just uh, thank the chat for being so awesome and supportive, and answer a couple of the questions that came in while Eric and I were more focused on the, the questions we had prepared. Uh, so someone asked the very obvious: Do we have the same hairstylist? Did we coordinate, or whatever this is here, the widows? Peak. I would I would say what we have is the same hairline. We've both been balding since birth, and um, the hours that we're working is probably not helping our stress level. <laughs> so we just have the same hairline. And one way to hide male, male pattern baldness is to make the front a little higher. So I, I think we just accidentally um, you know coordinated there. Um, just uh, TV chat. We had a question from a uh, premium member, KU uh, Dig2, who asked a few different questions about how we determine a brilliancy. Um, it's too bad Eric isn't here for that because he he and I have had a lot of product meetings lately in a, um, our Slack analysis classification room, working with a lot of the most brilliant brains in our company, trying to do everything we can to dive into what seem like silly questions, but trying to define as best you can when a move should be excellent versus brilliant. It's actually... What you're asking, I, I, I want to know your opinion, actually. Send me a message. It's actually, it's it's clearly subjective to a degree, um, but um, we, we are working all the time on the next the next generations of our of our analysis, our key moments, of our answering the whys of the game. Um, and so I would say we, we actually put more energy into trying to define and, and sort of categorize for different levels of chess understanding too, right? Like for, for one person, one person blunder, maybe to a beginner player, that move is actually okay, you know? And, and, and the context in which you deliver criticism can be super important because you want people to feel encouraged and that they're learning from their games, not just criticized, right? So, so believe it or not, I, I actually really like that question because it's actually something we spend a lot of time on. Um, and, um, and there's Eric in the chess TV chat saying just that. Um, there's, uh, again, guys, we're gonna get to the Q&A portion. So for those of you who really want your question heard, please post it on Chess TV. Not because we don't love Twitch and YouTube and our communities there, but I can only do so many things here. One man band, so I've been tend to be focused on the Chess TV chat. Um, there was another great question from Twitch though. Someone asked me if I've gotten over the breakup with Robert because he's now dating Daniel Naroditsky. First of all, me and Robert, contrary to popular belief, were never that close to begin with, all right? No one even likes Robert. No, I'm kidding. Everyone likes Robert better than me. Okay. Um, Anyway, so that's that's the truth on that one. Um, what else was going on here? Trying to get through some of the other questions I missed. Um, let's see, there was a question here that uh, you have a question, uh, an ex a suggestion to make opening explorer sections based on ratings. We're doing a lot for the future of opening explorer analysis, combining those tools to be, I guess, what serious chess players would refer to as uh, a combination of maybe the things you know and love about Chessbase, which has been historically kind of the best, most used database program. Um, and then some of the modern things that all of us online sites are doing together. You know, they have lead chess studies, you have chess.com analysis, uh, you have different repertoire trainers and things. And we're doing, we're working on a, a something to try to bring everything that we envision of being an awesome tool together. Again, that's me always saying more than Eric would want me to, but I have the microphone and he left. So there's very little he can do about that, isn't there? Um, anyway, but yeah, we are working super hard on something to improve the openings, explore and how that all works. Um, okay, so uh, we've got that. And uh, now that I caught up on Twitch, caught up on Chess TV, um, please ask questions. The team will continue to kind of bring them. Um, one of the product questions I regret not getting to, I'm gonna read now, cause I know Eric is still watching, Aquaman. Uh, asked about a feature to bring uh, simuls to chess.com. So you can actually already play simuls. All you have to do is go to your settings and turn on play multiple games at once. Um, you may be referring to how other sites do simuls. We do have plans in the works to, to build out maybe more organized simuling systems. Um, I, I would answer it the way Eric does, which is that it's kind of a smaller use case, right? There's a lot of people playing millions of games and wanting to analyze them and do puzzles. And so it is definitely clear and it's something we want to do, especially as our streamers have really taken off and helping to grow the game and all this stuff. So simuls we know are something people want, Aquaman. Um, and um, you can already do it. You can already play multiple games, but we'll, you know that that's on a, on a later item on the roadmap to kind of improve the whole, like the sign up process of a simul, how you manage the members of your simul, all that stuff. And, and that is something we're aware of. Um, okay, so I'm gonna leave that one at that. And without any further ado, Adieu, 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 adieu. Without any further adieu, God, it's weird. Adieu. Time to play. Let's go.
let's go. So we're going to the bot page. So I'm going to start out playing Jimmy um, because I need confidence in my life. And um, Jimmy, Jimmy is a great guy, um, but also looks like he's a little lost. How did he, how did you get here, Jimmy? Um, are you, you know, we're going to play you right now. I apologize if anyone watching says, Hey, that kind of looks like me. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying anything, but the event we're going to do with the bots is going to be so much fun. And then I want to play people with hats and things like that. All right. But I'm going to play versus Jimmy. And then, and then it's uh, go time challenge mode only. Then it's go time. And I will be playing against, uh, against Danny bot. It's going to happen. So I'm going to try to beat Jimmy in record time. A classic. Ooh, he played F6. So this is actually a good instructive moment for those of you who don't know. You can play Knight C6 and then F6 as a line in the Lopez. Playing F6 immediately is actually not a good idea. You need the Knight on C6 first. And it's specifically because of the Knight takes E5 idea that Jimmy, Jimmy doesn't know about poor guy. Poor guy's about to learn a real valuable lesson, isn't he? Oh, Jimmy, the Jimster, as he was probably called in college. Jimtown. Jimmy, Jimmy Bop. Jimmy Do Bop. Jimmy Do Bop Bop Baran, right? Whatever happened to the Hanson kids, right? Mm, bop, chicka, chop, ba, do. Can you pre move? Oh, you can pre move against the bots. That's a new feature. We didn't always have pre moving against the bots. I guess I'll castle because the kids watching at home probably need to see some instructive stuff. We're going to bring the bishop out. And all right, this is confidence time, everybody. I'm not bragging on beating Jimmy. They're like, way to go, Dan. You feel good about yourself? Congratulations. Let's try to checkmate him in one move. Uh, see, he always finds things when he needs to, this gymster. All right, now it's main two. Check and pre-move. Okay. All right, we did it. I got three stars. I'm going to go get a new game now. I click on new game, and I'm taken back to our favorite bot page. And we're going to scroll down. And uh, let's see now. You can play the celebrity bots. Danny and Hikaru apparently um, wasn't totally my idea. Um, that looks like me in a parallel parallel dimension where I'm a serial killer, right? I think I had slick back hair for a very short period in my life. Um, I was trying to grow a long ponytail and I think I was made fun of mercilessly um, at one of our first company meetups. I was like in my early twenties by Dallin and I cut my hair. Notice that Dallin, our designer, continues to make me look like I'm like some, you know, awkward version of a John Travolta, you know, movie that went straight to DVD right? I mean, who is this guy? But he did get my hairline correct. Look at the widow's peak, right? Look at the balding, the male, male pattern baldness with the horseshoe pattern. All right, here we go. We ready? I'm going to beat you, Danny, in challenge mode. Okay, boom shakala. Oh my God, this is going to be awkward. All right, this is going to be awkward. I don't even say things like that anymore, okay? I don't even say boom shakala anymore. This is not the 90s. Um... All right, let's hope he plays the dragon. That would be the dumbest thing, Danny. Oh, Danny Bot is an idiot. Oh, based on my, by the way, if you don't know, so much work has gone into our bots. They literally do play the repertoires and openings. They have personality. So I would play the dragon. God, that's something I would do. When it comes to the dragon, I wish I could quit you. Okay, that's, I mean, I'm a, I'm a regular broke back mountain when it comes to the dragon. That is the truth. This is literally my repertoire. Let's see if I can beat myself. <laughs> that came out wrong. Let's hope I can beat myself hard, actually. Beat myself real bad. <laughs> that would be the goal of today. All right, so he's playing theory. Classic Danny bot. Okay, um, so we will play classic dragon theory. This is all theory. I've played this position for both sides. So now with a5, yeah, they're calling the bluff of the... Um, they're calling the bluff of the rook hanging on f8 because you don't want to take it in these lines the opposite colored let's say dark square bishop leads to lots of attacks okay but now eventually they go too far this is classic danny you can't just continue to laugh in the face of danger of your rook dan what an idiot <laughs> danny <laughs> this is so much fun actually i love making fun of myself um i wish he was talking more eric if you're watching we need to make a feature you know i know you're like okay dan you big narcissist okay no i'm just saying like it's fun when the bots talk right whether it's a danny bot or not <laughs> it's fun all right the risk of playing a3 is you create more anchors right for the future pawn storm in this particular case though um i'm not really worried about f5 here that's the trick you have to watch out for f5 and e4 coming with aggressive intentions over here in this position danny bot needs to deal with knight g5 next so we'll see if he's smart enough to deal with that Okay, now he moves the rook. 
and we'll go for g4 he'll probably play h6 that's the best move no what in the world danny bot i actually really like my chances now hmm maybe i'm maybe i'm just wrong about liking my chances that's also more than possible I lose to myself. I lose to myself. Okay, this is not the best theory for black because you're supposed to prevent exactly what I'm doing, which is preventing black from making breakthroughs. Yeah, you like that rook on the B file, Danny? Guess what, Dan? You're never going to get the open diagonal, brah. Not going to happen, brah. <sighs> okay, but the queen on H4 is actually really awkward. The, probably the computer says that they love black's position. Because normally you've got the queen over here, right? It's a totally different structure, but the queen outside the pawn chain, these are the kind of things that computers do that are just super, super frustrating, right? Because now I'm in like a weird spot where the pawns are more awkward targets than most. I can, I can try to put something on D6. I like that I don't have a clock ticking. I'm not going to lie. I was the one who was advocating for time. And now I'm like, I'm glad Eric didn't give me the feature I wanted, right? Some of them, the best things in life are unanswered prayers to the CEO, right? I probably should think of how many times I'm thankful that Eric didn't give me a feature I want. That would actually be super good for our relationship. Because I can think of a lot of things I'm unhappy that he didn't give me, but I, could, but I bet I could also think of a very long list that I'm happy he didn't give. Man, that just got, that just got deep, bro, about our relationship. All right, I got to figure this out. So if I play bishop to d6, I'm going after the e5 pawn, but no, because c4 is falling. Um, I don't like my position. I would have, I would love this position if the queen was on c7, legit. Like, how did this happen? All right, I'm going to play bishop d6. I have an idea, which is... I want to play knight c5, but he has e4 with a discovered tempo, and he also hits b2 behind the pawn. So you'd love to play this, right? I'd love to also take here, force him to capture with c6 falling. All right, at this point I have... <gasps> no, knight e2 check! <laughs> you can't just blunder against yourself, Dan! Oh, crap. Can I take back a move? I can't take back a move in challenge mode? Well, let me... Uh, it won't let me take back a move in challenge mode. I want to take back a move in challenge mode. Check town population, you. You're a jerk, Danny. WTF, bro. <laughs> Seriously, that was super, that was super frustrating. Like, I'm not going to lie. That was super duper frustrating. Um, and, uh, and yeah, someone's going to clip that. Okay, well, this is why computers are good. And I'm not. So I'm just going to resign. I have that much respect for the ugly John Travolta version of myself that Dallin made. Thank you, Dallin. Um, and thank you for the check town population. You, I shall resign. Wait, but it doesn't make you resign in challenge mode. That's interesting. You won't let us take back moves, but you also don't let us resign. So new game is basically resigning. I think that's because for a lot of users learning to play versus the computer, like, even resigning is a bit foreign in chess. Like people are kind of like they play out to the checkmate or it also kind of feels bad, man, right? So that's kind of why we don't have that. I, I actually like that feature. And it even makes me feel a little better about what just went down between these two Dannys. Danny bot beats Danny, serious Danny. Okay, well, that's going to leave a mark. And uh, and yeah, okay. Well, um, that was nutty. And uh, and where do we go now? So I think it's our last part of the show, which is Q&A and final thoughts. So I'm going to bring up the, uh, the um, run of show awesome list you guys have been doing. I'm also going to try to follow chat, but full disclosure, guys, I wasn't kidding when I say from here on out, I'm probably really only going to be able to read things from Chess TV chat in real time. I've got some questions from Twitch, though, that were added here. So final Q&A, if you haven't played against the bots yet, you see how much fun it can be. Um, if any of you beat Danny Bot while streaming, I will give you something. I don't even know yet, but we got a cash prize tournament coming. I mean, maybe for now, we'll just do like a casual thing. If you actually film it start to finish, all right? And we're going to assume you're not cheating because who would cheat against a computer? Like, come on, you're better than that. You're better than that, right? 
First person to do it gets a one-year diamond membership. Just throw me, actually, wait, you have to have a diamond membership to play Danny Bot, I think, but we'll just give you an extra year. So go ahead and do it. Go, go give me, throw me a video of you playing Danny Bot. If you beat Danny Bot cleanly, um, we'll give it to you. So, um, all right, we've got, we've got a bunch of active chess TV chatters. We've got Twitch, we've got YouTube. Here's the final questions we're going to run through. Um, Odds Jeffrey on YouTube wants to know when are we going to have official tournaments for low rated players? Maybe the return of Arena King. So I actually did, I actually did already um, talk about that. We are going to bring Arena Kings back. I'm going to bold the questions from my production team. If they want to throw the questions up, they can. Um, not no pressure, but I'll bold the questions I'm answering and then add any more team. I know Tom and Chris, you guys are working hard. If you want to add any questions to the doc here, I'll try to work through them um, to help those on Twitch and YouTube who I'm not following like Chess TV. Um, yeah, Arena Kings is coming back. You know, official tournaments, we did launch a premium arena. Um, you know, there was a lot of fair play violations, to be honest with you. And not to say that title players aren't breaking the rules, but you see the reports we give you in our in our, in our our breakdown, right? We're closing literally 100,000 accounts and only 14 title players a month. That sucks. And I don't even like closing 14 title players a month, but there's a lot of other accounts we're closing, right? And it's And it's hard and we're doing everything we can to create you know, opportunities and arena Kings is going to be something that we're bringing back because in order to win a prize in arena Kings, you got to be streaming. And that already opens the door for us to make sure we have, you know, a slightly more measurable and frankly entertaining experience. So um, there's odds Jeffrey on YouTube. There's the answer there. Um, question from Malris seven on Twitch wants to know regarding fair play, any chance of getting interactive checks for players like during TT, we actually do have that. We do do interactive checks. Our proctoring is actually very thorough and doesn't always make title players happy. Um, in fact, um, we have to explain to them that it's kind of for their own protection and we randomly check even the best players in the world. If Magnus and Hikaru are okay sharing their screen and having double cameras on their back and on their front, excuse me for how that sounded, then you should be okay with it. And uh, we are proctoring all the time. So I'm sorry, I'm not exactly sure what that question was about. Um, Frozen Ton wants to know how to report a bug on the iPhone app. Um, I believe there's a, there's a tool to do that. Worst case scenario, take a screenshot with your iPhone and email it to support at chess.com, just support at chess.com. Um, and if you find a bug, please report it. We do appreciate that. Um, general Twitch chat. How exactly does one go about playing correspondence chess on chess.com? So that's a big question. We actually have all the rules laid out in our terms of service. Um, it's very, you're allowed to use books. You're allowed to use any ICCF, which is the International Correspondence Chess Federation, for those who don't speak Swahili. International Chess Federation, uh, International Correspondence Chess Federation, excuse me. Um, you're allowed to use books. You're allowed to use databases of previous games. And even if those previous games have, have included previous engine analysis because you put in the effort to analyze the game, you are never allowed to access any form of real-time um, assistance, whether that's engine or another person. It's against the rules. Um, and you are also not allowed to use table bases. So as long as you're not using an engine, a friend, or a table base, you're probably using a legal resource in correspondence chess. Um, we asked, we already answered the question about the hair. Um, yes, no one's influencing our hair except our bad genetics, I would say, <laughs> me and Eric. Um, well, someone wants to know thoughts on having something like decode chess. So we actually are working super hard on things like that all the time. And have you used the Dr. Wolf app? Um, because there's a lot of, of amazing things coming to the future of chess.com's coach experience, analysis experience, and the Dr. Wolf app is awesome for those who are not already using it. Uh, you should be. Um, next one, what are plans for improving the experience of watching top games and tournaments? Eric, when are we allowed to, it's coming very, very soon. This is a very, very long awaited feature. We know that we have not had the best experience in terms of watching highest levels of chess events. Um, but I would say you're going to be surprised and, and delighted very, very soon. I don't want to say by the end of quarter four, because it's always dangerous when you put timelines on complicated um, development processes, but very, very soon. Uh, Tayup999 on Twitch wants to know, how does, oh yeah, we already asked, how, how do you give a move that's brilliant? Right. I guess that was also asked by somebody over on Chess TV and I kind of answered it. Um, so and again, please stay active on Chess TV. I'm seeing your questions and I'll scroll through it. Um, very good question, uh, Christian Sawaya, which I'm not going to get into right now in terms of why we shadow ban players versus publicly. And, and there's a lot there's a lot that goes into how we operate. 
Um, I will say just overall, we try to have the utmost respect for everybody and give opportunities for second chances. And we do that even if we close someone publicly or in a shadow ban fashion. Um, and we are working super hard to make sure that as online chess becomes kind of the de facto standard, especially with the current state of affairs in the global pandemic we're facing, we're aware of our responsibility. And that is not a, um, you know, I'll, I'll dive quickly through it to just say, I don't want to stick my foot in my mouth too much, but it's, it's complicated, right? Because our number one job has always been just to protect chess.com and the integrity of games on our site. That is the product, right? Playing chess. Um, and now that expectations have gone higher and uh, with the amount of money events we have and, and, and title players and reputations, all kinds of stuff, right? We're, you know, we're, we're trying to find the right ways moving forward. And we are working super hard on this right now to make sure that, you know, it, that we're really are happy with all of our processes and standards. And um, I feel pretty good about the direction we're going. And um, it's, it's taking a lot of investment, but I'll just say that, you know, we are aware of our responsibility, not just to chess.com, you know, anymore, but the global chess community online and otherwise. And um, I believe in the future where, you know, we cooperate and hopefully people stop uh, cheating. But that last sentence is really the problem. People, people don't always stop doing bad things. And so regardless, you know, people are going to be upset when they get caught doing bad things. Right. And, and that's a reality, unfortunately. Um, are there any plans to put more focus on the development of four player chess from Justin Davis? Uh, we're working on things all the time on four player chess. I'm not really that close to my ear is not that close to the grindstone there. Um, I know that Tom Chesscom Tom, who's active on chess TV chat right now and Twitch, he might have more answers for you. Um, Olympiad wants to know when we'll be able to start sub battle games from outside of live chess. I'm not exactly sure what that means. You can use chess.com slash play. I don't know if you know, we have direct link challenging. If Tom or Chris can show that you can actually give a direct link to someone and they can click it and play, even if they're not logged in, even if they're not a user, which is a super cool thing that we didn't always have. Um, so I don't know um, exactly what you're asking, Olympiad, but I do love you. I don't really know you that well, but thank you. Um, how long will it be before you can play a game on the Apple website and have a video versus that person in real time? Now, that is a question. Video versus video, you both have the option to turn on your video and see face to face. That's crazy. Is Eric still around? That sounds like something that's pretty easy for him, right? Hey, Eric, can you just add video versus video play, video play in real time integration, right? Right. I'm not trying to be sarcastic to your question, the Clegs, but that, that is a super complicated piece of tech. But I actually do love the idea. That would be super cool if you could like mutually just opt in. Let's see each other on camera. There are other services for that. Right. There are free services for that. Skype and Zoom and otherwise. So in theory, you could already do that with someone in chat. It's kind of weird. That's a privacy thing. I don't even know what's going on with that. But let's just say that that is an interesting idea. Um, we do currently have plans for our future of coaching online that may, may or may not be involving stuff like that, but that's an interesting opt-in experience. People can play versus each other on video. I mean, like it, yeah, I like it. All right, the doc is done over to Chess TV chat. Um, how about a chess board that can rotate 360 degrees? How much is 360 again? Like, isn't 360 just back on the same person? Like, how does that work? So is that a trick question to make me look like an idiot? People do that a lot. We're going to move on from that. I don't know. Um, Platinum member Kirkland says chess.com has come a long way from when, uh, from uh, I think it was from 2008 when I became a member. He said 1008, but if you're that old, you are currently the only living Highlander. Stop chopping off people's heads to be immortal, Kirkland. But Assuming you're not actually that old and that was a typo, there we go, 2008, he clarifies. That's awesome to hear. Thank you so much. The compliment means the world. And, you know, uh, the we have so much more to do in, in the job that we get to do every day that we're lucky to do. But I really, really do appreciate. Um, we have come a long way from 2008. That's a fact. And thank you. Um, oh, that's interesting. The Dredge G's Diamond member wants to know if we can offer unrated arenas. You might be in the minority there. I think most people like the arena for the thrill of the kill, for the fact that it's ultra competitive and you and you get, you know, kind of with our algorithm that isn't based on standings and results. It's based on kind of strength of competition, kind of makes the experience always fun. It's hard to lose three games in a row 
in our arena. That's one thing that is like our criteria, right? So we know that different views on how to do an arena, but we like our system. We think it's a lot of fun. And I think most people like it because they play against someone who's of their rating. An unrated arena is interesting. I will make note of that. Um, um, blah, blah, blah. I'd really like to make a bot of myself to play or make one in general, says Diamond member R. Will Hewitt. That's an interesting thing. If someone could like build their own like bot, like here's my opening repertoire. Here's what I would do. Like we could give them a series of questions. That's a cool idea. Like bot personality. Is Eric around? He needs another feature to add to his roadmap. People can an answer questions, take a test. By the way, have you ever seen chesspersonality.com? Everyone, please, please go to chesspersonality.com. I hope that site's still up. That's one of our sites. I'm going to make sure it's still up before I send everybody there. It's one of the fun sites we've done over the years. Oh, yeah. Have you ever seen chesspersonality.com? This is a fun site that uh, we did many, many moons ago. It's actually pretty cool if you've never done it. You can take a quiz and actually be given sort of a personality that compares you to world champions and other famous players. And we put a lot of time into it. I think it's actually pretty cool, but that's an interesting idea. You would, you would, you would almost create a profile of your own chess strengths and weaknesses and then play against yourself. Um, that's actually an interesting idea. And like I said, Eric doesn't have a lot to do. So hopefully he'll get right on that. Um, cool. Um, Question from, I think, uh, premium member MSD238, will there be a chess.com variance championship? Yes, there will be, and it will be in 2021. Yes, it will happen. Um, uh, Dahl D wants to know why chess.com's press releases, not articles, press releases. Um, our articles are typically not listed, but that's because our company was founded out of Palo Alto, and... Um, that has previously been uh, the only previous headquarters we ever had. We might change that. I don't know. I think it may actually be, well, some of our uh, company is still uh, filed as far as like legally and stuff like that. But it basically became a thing that represented, you know, the West Coast headquarters. And so when we're doing big news, we would often list it as kind of, you know, from Palo Alto. Um, Danny, what are the current features planned by chess.com team? You are most I should not read questions before I've had them vetted. That's how Ron Burgundy moments happen right? Ron will read whatever you put on stream, <laughs> right? You know, go bleep yourself, member. No, I'm kidding. That would be some Ron, Ron Bur Burgundy would say. Um, but I'm going to be a little careful. I'm going to try to read before I, before I read. Danny, what currently, what features are planned currently that you're most excited, hyped about that will help members um, in their, in their training? I would say this feature I've referenced a lot um, that is about analysis, game searching, things you can do with it, repertoire trainings, things like that. That's something we're super pumped about. Uh, the bots are super fun, um, but I would say that tool is going to be the most comparable to the word you use, training, right? You're really uh, For players who are really looking to take their chest to the next level, really hoping that that tool is done uh, soon. Um, so that's one. I would say if you also use chess.com study plans, if you're looking for like a passive guide on your own time, just look Google chess.com study plans. They're actually pretty good. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, G3 and wins wants an untitled junior speeches championship. It's complicated for us because we don't know who title players are. We also have to confirm ages, which you can really only do with like kind of publicly known, you know, titled chess players. So I, I, I love the idea and I appreciate it. It's not like dismissing the community. We, we want to do events all the time for all levels of the community, but it's just, there's only so much we can do. And um, that's probably not going to happen, unfortunately. So I'm sorry. Uh, thank you to Nitro Tibble with the uh, subscription there. Back over to Chess TV one last time and YouTube. Um, love the new versus computer update on YouTube. Well, it loves you. Um, the CEO wants to punish Danny Bot. I think the Danny Bot just punished me on YouTube. Yeah. Um, wow. There's a lot more questions on Chess TV. I got to make a note of a chess TV chat is not currently refreshing the way I would like it to. Um, um, a lot of questions. I got to scroll back. Uh, from diamond member Masso, the guy who we answered a question from, um, Oh no, you were answering someone else's question in the chat from discord earlier. Um, Diamond member Dritman 13, there's a quick opening explorer that gives you the main move. There's one that gives you the most common position. 
Okay, you guys are just kind of in your own discussion. That's great, cool. Um, interesting. So Massa one says, while we're on small quirks, something that has annoyed me recently is that you don't see the engine continuation for the, oh, the engine continuation from the best move. Um, that's that's interesting. I, I mean, that's hard to have your cake and eat it too, to hurt the feature without helping the feature. So I hear you, um, but it's not that easy. Kirkland, you cannot get a USCF over the board rating through chess.com, but you can get a USCF online rating. We hold regular United States Chess Federation tournaments on chess.com. Maybe uh, someone can share a link to that and you can uh, you can go and check it out. So uh, nothing like having more than 4,000 viewers for a show that's just about talking. So thank you for being here, everybody. Uh, we are at peak viewership right now um, and I don't really want to go anywhere, but we've kind of run out of topics. Um, I don't want to play Danny Bot again because that was embarrassing and frustrating. Um, and uh, so exactly what you're talking about Diamond member MSD 238 is what we're working on. Uh, a tool that organizes analysis, opening preparation, everything. And uh, and yeah, so that's exactly what we're working on. Uh, you can get a classical online rating, like meaning slow time control. Um, you can't, oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh no, I guess the slowest we have is rapid actually. We don't have anything that's beyond that. That's an interesting question. Would we ever add a classical rating system to chess.com? Huh. Let me head over to my profile on chess.com and just confirm what I, my, my stats. Over to chess.com. Actually, I'll do that over here on, on uh, Parsec so you guys can see it um, on, the, on the show. I'll, I'll head over to, I think I can head over to my, to my stats and that's not going to break our show. We'll find out. Yeah. Oh wait, this is my other account, my other other account. But yeah, we don't have, we don't have a uh, classical. Sorry, this is not the account I use most actively. The account I use for shows, so I don't play on it very often. Um, but let's go to a different profile. Let's go to a profile of someone who maybe does use his account more often. Someone named Daniel Wrench. There's me. This is the account I use all the time. And yeah, we don't have classical. Although we did add a FIDE rating for for players who have FIDE profiles. That's pretty cool. When did we add that? I don't know why my voice just got real high. <laughs> anyway, classical. Um, so look what I can do. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so we could add classical. I hear you. I hear you. Games more than games longer than 60 minutes. That's an interesting feature request that is probably never going to happen, but thanks for making it. Um, can we make round robin tournaments on chess.com? Uh, that is also in the, in the, in the works, um, similar to like simuls. But what I would say is here's the reason it hasn't been done. Whenever we need to do a round Robin, we already have the ability to do that with match commands. Round Robins are very rare, but for our community who maybe wants to run round Robins for their clubs, things like that, that is in, in, in the pipeline just hasn't been given, um, top priority. So, um, but yes, indeedy, um, indeedy, both sneezy, um, Anyway, all right. Well, I think we're going to wrap this thing up. Really, really appreciate everyone being here. Um, we, uh, we've, had a, we've had another fun one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, catching up with, with Eric, the CEO, as well as Mike Klein over at Chess Kid. And it was great to see Hammer, who again will be joining me on November 2nd for commentary for the Magnus Carlsen match. For the most part, you will see the crew that whether you know and love them, you've gotten to know them. That's Danny Wrench and Robert Hess. We will be doing the majority of the speech championship shows, but guys making appearances will be Jan Ludwig Hammer, Maurice Ashley, and maybe some others. Uh, so definitely make a note of that. Thank you uh, for all your support. If anyone hasn't um, subscribed to the Twitch channel, we're doing more and more content for the break time. Uh, for the, uh, Not that you have to be a subscriber. Some of you will see it as well, but uh, if you want to it be absolutely sure, you can see some of the, the secret matches that have been running on chess.com. Uh, we've been doing some fun videos, me versus... Guys like John Bartholomew, Eric Rosen, um, Levy Rosman, and then they've been doing their own matches, uh, Simon Williams, many others. So some fun stuff to kind of uh, give you some, some content running our own little kind of tournament there, winner take all cash knockout events. So uh, consider subscribing to the Twitch channel or watch the Chess TV where you don't have to see the commercial break to make sure you, uh, you get that content all the time. So, all right, everybody, um, without any further adieu, 
Um, okay, sorry, one last thing. Let's see, one last thing, because Firecat829802 on Chess TV says he wants us to show him. I, I can't show you the full feature that's coming, but I am going to show you <clears throat> um, full screen real quick. Um, I will show you that, again, I've said this a few times, but when you're at analysis, a lot of people don't know that you already have have saved analysis. You can already access saved analysis. So let me just let me just analyze a game. And the moment you make a single move, you can see the link come up for saved analysis. If you if you weren't aware, you already have the ability. Oh, I'm on the Danny account. Darn it. <laughs> when I'm on the Daniel Wrench account, there's a lot of analysis here, including detailed analysis I've done for videos and those sort of things. And you can you can save your analysis already. So if you're already looking to have a study you can go back to uh, that you can even share with other people. Uh, this is some of the, the very simplistic version of things we're working on. It's gonna look totally different, be way more amazing. But you said show us, and I wanna remind you that if you analyze you know, any of your games, you know, if you go to your archive, is this account played any? Yeah, sweet, I have. So let's go see what that is. Oh, it's Bughouse, LOL. Um, Bughouse is not an ideal way to, uh, to show analysis, though it is fun. It is fun for sure. Bughouse is fun, especially when I get checked. Here's a one minute game in an arena. So if you analyze any of your, oh, it was only a one move game. <laughs> Well, this account is just kind of funny. Apparently, I need to uh, uh, to to get some actual real games. Are there any? Oh, here we go. Three minutes. Finally. All right. Finally, took me a long time. If you go into analyzing any game with a game report, if you if you analyze it, anything you do, any variations you add, any updates you make, you know, instead of bishop h4, what if rook takes h3, you know, and you add any notes to it, you go like, hey, you know, hey, you know, comment after. You say things like, okay, it's not working on the on the other computer, but you add comments, you add symbols, and then you click update and you go to saved analysis and there it is. You've got it right there. So you can do that for future games if you're into it. All right, there you go. So fun, fun little fact. Um, all right, I think we're out of here. I appreciate everybody. Thank you to the team, the mods, uh, our production crew, everyone working hard and I will see you again on November 1st when the Speed Chess Championship kicks off alongside Grandmaster Robert Hess, Maxime Vachet Le Grau versus Nihal Soren, followed by Magnus Carlsen and Parham Magsudlu. The Speed Chess Championship kicking off on November 1st. We will see you then. Otherwise, if you're in the US or if you celebrate, actually, Halloween is a global. Yeah, so everywhere. I always be careful with holidays. That wasn't me trying to be American centric. That was me being respectful of the fact that not every holiday is international. But if you celebrate Halloween, don't scare anybody, okay? You can really you can really damage people if you scare them, all right? Stay indoors, wear a mask inside, don't enjoy Halloween. Um, but if you are enjoying Halloween in any form, good luck. And uh, I'm gonna stop talking now. <laughs> and we'll see everybody on Sunday with the Speeches Championship.